What's happening everybody? Today we are going to be talking about how to do a cinema graph. Cinema? Photography? Cinematography? Cinema graph. Somebody was really, really, really on it when they made that name up. Dan? What's a cinemagraph? Well, I'm going to tell you. A cinemagraph is essentially an image where a small part of that image is moving. The reason I think that cinemagraphs are absolutely amazing is because they bridge the gap between cinema and photography. You, for a long time, you either were a photographer or you were a cinematographer. And you either took video and you shot video and you shot cinema or you shot photos. They're in the same sphere, they're in the same genre, you, you're still using cameras and so on and so forth, but they were essentially doing two completely separate jobs. Cinema, cinema graphs, they weld the two together so that both parties can have that extra little thing that they can do to just make their product look utterly awesome. It's just a tiny part of that photo that is moving or a small part a large part of that video that is still and it's just unbelievably cool unbelievably cool it just adds another thing in your bag that you can think I'm gonna go out and shoot a, a cinemagraph today and instead of, I'm not going to shoot a photography I'm not going to shoot a film I'm going to shoot a cinemagraph and let's say let's say you, you've got a photo that you want to do it for so um, I don't know maybe I'm shooting me uh, pouring coffee or I'm drinking coffee or I'm watching TV or I'm sat reading a book um, and, and that's a cool shot on its own, you know, me sat there in a book with a nice background and so on and so forth or pouring a bit of coffee or whatever. Um, or it's a nice video of me sat there reading a book, you know, moving portions of it, you know, dollies and so on and so forth. But this just gives an extra dimension to that particular art form. It just makes it look utterly amazing. So what do I need to make a cinemagraph, you ask? Right, exactly. Firstly, you're going to need a tripod. You're going to need a tripod that is steady, rock solid, doesn't move. If it's a lightweight tripod that you've got, then secure that around the edges with bags or weights or boxes or something heavy that can keep it absolutely rock steady. Secondly, you're going to need a camera, of course. We need a camera. It doesn't really matter what kind of camera, but it has to be a camera that's going to shoot video. It can be a DSLR, can be a film camera, can be a handy camera, anything, even a pocket camera anything at all as long as it shoots video. For me, I'm going to be using a DSLR today. This is being shot on a 5D, um, just for those people that are interested. And um, that's what that, that's perfectly serviceable to, be, serviceable to use. Shooting the frame rate, don't worry about any of that. We don't need to worry about the frame rate on this because it's essentially you're shooting a still image. You're going to take a still from the video and change that into a cinemagraph. So let's get down to it. Okay, so what we need to do now is get together, get together all the stuff that we need in order to make our cinemagraph. Uh, for my particular cinemagraph, for this tutorial, I've got some coffee and I've got a mug. And the cinemagraph is going to be the coffee pouring in to the mug. Okay, so step one's complete. So we've, got, we've shot the footage we need for the files so that we can create the cinemagraph. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this footage into Photoshop and um, finish the job off. I know what you're thinking, Photoshop, aren't we supposed to do video editing? Yeah, I was completely blown away by the fact that you could do video in Photoshop as well, but you can, and in this instance, it's the best tool for the job. So let's just take a look at the footage and see what we've got. One thing I will point out is that um, I know you can do colour grading and you can adjust levels and so on and so forth in Photoshop. You can do everything that you need to do. Um, however, I prefer to colour grade my stuff in a professional colour grading program. Um, and as such, I've opened up a project in Premiere Pro, dropped the file in there and then um, colour corrected it first before I dropped it onto the hard before I dropped it out of the hard drive. Export that out. So before we go into Photoshop, it's already as it is. Personally, my advice would be make sure you've colour corrected it first before you go in there um, and mess with it in Photoshop. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to find a part, part of the lens, in and out one, part of the video that is smooth enough to 
to use as a cinema graph. So as we can see here, the beginning is just way, 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 way too much movement going on. And the end does a scrub past that, the middle of the end is also got that spit that's coming out, as we can see, you can see just spurting out on the, the video there. That's also no good. That's just too much movement going off. So what we need to do is find a portion of the video that has got the smoothest screen and has also got the least amount of movement in it. And I think that that is roughly about that. Probably there. So what we do is we grab the beginning of our sequence and drag it to the where the playhead is. And then we move our playhead to a point where we want it to be. It doesn't have to be a lot of movement, it just has to be enough movement. So we're going to go to there and then I'm going to drag that back into place. So now we've got an in and an out point. Let's zoom this in. Get this back to the beginning. Okay. So now we've got an in and our in and out, out points. And we're good to go. What we also need to do is we need to make sure when this gear is selected that loop playback is selected on your gear. Um, and that means that when we hit play, what we get is we get this. We get a loop playback. There we go. Absolutely spot on. Still a little bit of movement there, and that is because you can see it jerking back and forth. That's because the end frame, this frame here, is different to this frame here. So the diff they're entirely different, and we need to sort that out. So how do we go about duplicating this layer? So what we're going to do is we're going to grab Cinema Graph, we're going to drag it all the way down to our, on our Layers panel to the new layer, and we're going to let go of it, and we get Cinema Graph Copy. copy. So now what we've got is we've got two of the same layers. Okay, so now we've duplicated it, we've got two layers in our timeline, both are exactly the same. As you can see, as I play it, it's basically the same video, and that's because it's just a copy of those. And the end frame and beginning frame are different, are the same on both, but they're different to each other. And what we need them to be is the same. So what we're gonna do is grab this bottom layer, and we're gonna drag that out until it meets the end of the top layer. What we need to do is extend this footage back a little bit, but that playhead stays within the same area. We need to blend those layers together. Um, and the way that we do that is we use opacity. So what we're going to do is we're going to click in the little arrow on the top timeline here, on the top copy, and we're going to drag the playlist, the playhead, all the way to the beginning of the clip, the cinemagraph clip at the, on the bottom layer. So we've got the beginning. We're then going to tap the stopwatch it says opacity. We click that and that's banged a keyframe in. We're then going to drag this further along somewhere, anywhere in that area, and then you're going to hit the little diamond between the two arrows on the opacity again. You're going to grab that, drag it, job done, click it, job done, and you can see that's highlighted. So you've now got two diamonds in there. Now, before you do anything else, you're going to go over to your layers panel, go to opacity, click on the opacity and just hit zero. And that way, you know it's at zero. There's no opacity to it. You then grab that triangle, that diamond, and you drag it all the way to the very end. And basically, what that's going to do for you is that's going to that's going to tell Photoshop that the from the from the first triangle, it's a hundred percent opacity, and by the time the timeline gets to the very end, it's at zero opacity. So there is no, it's completely invisible. It's faded away completely. Okay, so we play this back now and we can see that there is still a little bit of movement in my hand and in the Chemex and in the mug and so on and so forth and we need to eliminate that. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to, we're going to have, add another stamped layer above the, uh, the video that we've got. And the way we do that is we, uh, we hold down Shift, Command, Option and E. And that puts a no movement, nothing to do layer right over the top. Basically drag and drops an image over the top of our video. 
So let's just bring this clip down and make this a little bit smaller because we don't need the whole video to be, uh, the whole image to be completely off the timeline. We don't need a thousand minutes of it. Yeah, if you imagine basically you've got two videos and you've got, a, you've got a photograph that's going over the top, you've got a JPEG over the top of it. So effectively what's happening is, is we're putting the JPEG in front of the video and then we're going to punch a hole in it so that you can still see that the video is moving behind it. Um, but only a certain part of that video rather than the whole thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to play that and we're just going to make sure that what we see is nothing. We, want, we actually want to see nothing at this stage. What we need to see is just an image. You'll be able to hear any audio that you've got on there. You'll be able to, you'll be able to tell that there is video playing, but you won't be able to actually see anything. All you'll see is a straight image. So basically how do we do that? What we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our layers panel and we're going to make this top layer, the image layer that we've just added, this static layer, we're going to make that into a layer mask. So we're going to click down here where it says layer mask and this is the thing next to effects. So you can see it says add layer mask. We're going to click that and that's added a white box in there. We're going to make sure that our foreground is set to black and you can do that by hitting X or D. There we go. So I want it to be black. So that's what we're going to do. So we've selected X and we've got a black foreground and we've got our lens. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is once we've done that, we're gonna hit D for brush. Okay, so we want a brush, D for brush. And we're gonna make that a little bit bigger. Probably about the same width as your screen. And then what we're gonna do is just zoom in a little bit so that we can see what we're looking at. You know we want the Chemex coffee to be moving, so we're just going to paint away that little bit of coffee. Okay, now when we press play, as you can see, the coffee is now moving. If you want to see what you're actually painting, if you hit that slash key. you can actually see what it is you painted you can see where you're going. Okay, so that's looking really good now. So what we, all we need to do now really is save it out for the internet. And you can, to do that, you're going to hit uh, Command Option S and that's going to bring up a Save for Web option. Okay, so once we're in there, you've got to make sure that GIF is selected. And then down here, you've got a looping option. You want to make sure that Loop Forever is selected. And once that's selected and done and dusted, we'll look at the size of it, see what we are. We're at 1920 by 1080p. Um, it's 256 colors, 100%. You don't need to mess about with anything else on there. We'll basically save that out as it is. Click save, and we'll save it as cinemagraph.gif. I'm going to save that to my desktop. And that's it. Boom, we're done. We've got ourselves a cinemagraph. Looks absolutely fantastic. They're just amazing. They look brilliant on your website straight out to Instagram, straight on Facebook, Twitter, whatever you want to put it, absolutely brilliant. They just look really, really, really cool. If you like this tutorial, please do like and subscribe below and uh, leave a comment. I will get back to you. I will respond to your comments and I will see you next time.